today's video is about the QRP Labs QDX transceiver. I forgot my selfie stick, so apologies for the wobbly camera. So let's look at the website from qrplabs.com. And this is the QDX digital transceiver, which costs $69 in kit form. <clears throat> you have to solder a few components on the board. Maybe you have to wind your own coils, toroids, whatever surface mount devices are already mounted and I cheated and ordered it ready-made <laughs> and when it arrives it looks like this this is the QRP Labs focus please QDX digital transceiver very simple the red lights on because it's switched on and on the back all you have is a USB connector which I've discovered you need to plug in first before you turn on the power there's 12 volts power on my one there's also a 9 volt variant you can get if you want i wanted 12 and you don't need the ptt connected and this is the antenna so i've connected up a bnc lead to one of my outdoor antennas and this is actually going through the antenna matching unit from mfj which also gives an indication of output power which should be about five watts so it's a very very simple device and <clears throat> You just plug it into the computer, switch it on, and then if I just minimize this browser, what you need to do is to look in the control panel to make sure that the USB device has been recognized. This is control panel for Windows 10. A lot of people don't even know Windows has this built in, but there it is. And you click on device manager, which is here, listing the devices in a separate window. And what you have to do is make sure that uh, the USB device is found, which it will be, and there's no yellow asterisk exclamation mark on it or something saying there's a problem. <clears throat> and I discovered if you power up the QDX first and then plug it in, sometimes after Windows has loaded the driver automatically, there's a yellow exclamation mark because there's a, an error. Something It says something like device not recognized or something. All you have to do is to power down the QDX and then reapply power and then the yellow mark disappears so it's one of these i forgot which one it is one of those and then you should notice if you look under ports com and LT, lpt there should be a usb serial device which in this case is automatically assigned com 10 by windows uh, it's a bit of a random number usually it stays the same but it's not guaranteed and if you unplug it and plug it into a different usb port usually it gets a different com number which means that when you want to use WSJTX, you have to put in the correct mm -hmm. COM port number. Now this um, this transceiver, this QDX, is a purely digital transceiver. There's no analog components really, no signal processing, it's analog, which means that it generates a pure sine wave in software and then it shifts the frequency a little bit with the, the FSK modulation for sending data um, purely digitally. So it's a very clean output. And if we look at WSJTX, <clears throat> we can see already there are signals coming in. There's the audio level that's being detected directly from the receiver. I've got it on 15 meters, 21 megahertz. And you can see signals rolling in. What have we got there? NK0X. Could be in America. A K500, probably also in America. Some Europeans in the north and so on. So it's picking up signals quite nicely. And if you look at the waterfall display, you can see there are signals in there. The red is where I've selected to transmit around one kilohertz by pressing control and then clicking on that frequency. So it seems to be working nicely. And <clears throat> what I'm going to do is call CQ. Let's set to call CQ and it'll answer any calls. Okay, let's just go ahead and enable TX. And uh, already it's transmitting. You can see oh, it's just gone off on the uh, power indicator. I cheated, and this um, antenna tuning unit <coughs> is already tuned because I'm using a, um, a mobile mount whip antenna on the balcony, which I'll show you in a second. And that's very good. It's resonant at uh, 21 megahertz. There we are. And the power, according to this, is about six watts, but that's not a proper calibrated power meter at all. So it's certainly putting out the five watts that it's supposed to. And then I've matched it using the ATU to give a perfect no reflection SWR of one to one. 
we look out the window, we'll see the antenna being used at the moment, which is, well that's noisy, which is this one, that mobile whip. Actually, it's not a mobile whip, it's a um, portable whip antenna, but it's tunable. You can adjust the length of the tuning coil by sliding in and out. Um, very nice antenna. Not too expensive. It's supposed to have four radials connected at the base, which I don't have. Instead, I've connected it with this red wire for ground to my grounding system, which is chicken wire. I've got chicken wire running all around the balcony here. I'm going to get a bit more chicken wire and put it on the floor as well to give a bigger ground mass. And that seems to work quite nicely. And it certainly puts out signals which are receivable, as I'm about to hopefully demonstrate around the world. Let's just have a look. At PSK reporter, if it's had time to build up any signals yet. So 50 meters sent by me. As you can see, there's nothing. Oh, there's one. <laughs> there's one signal being received so far on the east coast of America, plus a few more. Let's just um, zoom out a little bit. There's a couple over here, northeast Europe, and that's where's that one? One minute ago. That's in Greece. Okay, so it's. Um, working, it's putting out signals, and of course this is not the ideal time of day, it's uh, 3 in the afternoon, so um, it's not the best time for propagation. Um, in the early mornings and in the evenings at dusk, when I see signals into Australia, Southeast Asia, Japan, all over Brazil, and into Canada, so it um, certainly works, that 5 watts. Let's have a look at what's being received. An hour and 15 meters show signals received by me. And oh no, that's sent. Let's change it to received. So again, zoom out a bit. There we go. So that signal's being received by the QDX transceiver with that whip antenna I just showed you on 21 megahertz. Sorry about the, the glow in the corner. And you can see you're receiving Central USA East Coast down there. Where's that? Guatemala, Belize, that is, and that is Cuba signals minus 20 dBs, signal to noise ratio minus 13. So it, the receiver seems quite sensitive. I like it a lot. And here I am in the UK, and you can see that the majority at this particular skip distance in Eastern Europe, Austria, and so on. And there's one down here. Where's that? <coughs> minus 5 dB signal to noise ratio. That's really good. And it's in Angola. So there's a signal there from Angola, and there's one down here, Brazil, minus 23 dBs. That's a bit weaker. So that's just what I've received in the last, how long has it been transmitting? I'm receiving probably five minutes at the most. And you can see it really works. So there's the QRP Labs QDX transceiver, which I can only highly recommend. I've got the version that does 20 meters and upwards. So it's 20, 15, and 10 meters plus the bands in between. There's another version you can order which does the lower frequencies. So it's 80 meters, 40 meters, and so on. I might be tempted to get one of those and have two of them. Of course, it's completely silent, doesn't get hot, it's a little bit warm after it's been running all day with 5 watts output, but no real heat to talk about at all. Um, very low power, if you look at the DC power consumption at 12 volts, on receive it's 2.2 watts, and when it goes to transmit, we'll see that it manages just a little bit less than 10 watts, there we are, 9.6 watts, so it's almost 0 0.7 amps. Just over 9 watts for 5 watts out. So it's fairly efficient and uh, it really works. So just leave it running. I really like this. So my recommendation is QDX is great. I want another one. Thank you for watching the video and remember to subscribe and like and all the rest of it. And until the next one.